How's it going my truant people, Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor back on Pokemon Showdown but today we're not battling, today we're doing something a little bit different and we're joined by my good friend Stromphal. Hello everyone, hope you're on a fantastic day. Hey, I am Stromphal. <laughs> Shit, uh, my name is Stromphal, I am a friend of Slacking's. I am pretty comfortable in the draft formats, in the VGC formats, not like well known in the fact that I, I am like a building kind of guy so I am more of a front office dude, for some people that you might know, such as uh, GBA people. But um, I'm here today because um, Slacking wanted me to show some of his work, and I can just go over them and see what I think of it. And criticize it a lot, probably. Um, May perhaps. perhaps. <laughs> so basically, each week, guys, when I build for the ABC, um, I build a team that I like, and I usually try and do some stupid things on it, because why not try and push that boat out? And then I will send it to Stromph and to Pokemon Trainer Hakeem and they will tell me how stupid I've been <laughs> and they will tell me what I should really be doing. Um, and that's kind of well, how... Well, you can't really trust Hakeem. You <laughs> can't really trust Hakeem. Because he likes to do uh... things like me, that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I but... feel like the, um, the, the, like the kindergarten teacher who just cleans up whatever you throw out. Yeah. So, well... uh... <laughs> Uh, but the idea is, guys, you watching this, you can see how I, uh, this is actually going to be our week, I don't even know what week, week 8 or 9 I think it is, for the ABC against the Dreadful Dragonites. That battle will go up after this video, um, and you can see how we are actually going to build for that battle, and the hope is that if any of you are involved in the draft format, you will kind of get an insight into how to team build, how you go about doing it. Um, and I guess the, the advantages of, of having friends that know how to do this sort of thing, <laughs> how you can kind of uh, leech off people and, <laughs> and do better because of them. <laughs> leech off people, wow. Make it sound like I'm sort of uh, like a prostitute now. Uh, okay. No, that, so, that, that's how um, I see Hakeem, not you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's uh, amazing. Friendship right there. So, you have built a squad that you want to use against yes. uh, the Dreadful Dragonites. I yes. have the matchup right here. Um, yeah. And why don't you kick off with your general thoughts on the matchup? Because that's so, usually where I start. Um, so basically, when I was looking at his team, I, I tried to kind of identify his major threats. And I forgot to get his team up on screen, which was stupid. So I'm just going to get that up now. Uh, I was looking at his team, and obviously he has this kind of sand team uh, with Tyranitar um, setting the sand for him. And then... Things like Mega Guard, Charm, Stoutland, and things like that benefiting from it. Yeah. Um, exactly. I, I, I kind of see Mega Guard, Charm as a threat, but like my team outspeeds it, and I feel like I have a few good counters to it. So initially, that was my kind of first thing. How am I going to deal with that? Um, but I feel I have a few good answers from that. So then after that, it was just making sure I outsped the right things under Sand, really, and, and had good types. But I don't know. It was quite a general build, this one. It wasn't as focused as some other teams. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I agree with you. He does have a pretty, like, sand-centered team in a yeah. way that he does have three components that work together pretty pretty good, actually. Stoutland, Mega Garchomp, and Tyranitar. Uh, but he also yeah. has another core, which is the Sun Core, with Mega Ven not Mega Venusaur, regular Venusaur and Tokoro, which yeah. he actually has brought a lot. Yes, um, yeah. He does have... And Heliolis kind of works with that core too, yeah. um, which makes it pretty co pretty important to build for. Uh, he yeah. does have also a Scizor and Reuticlus, which is two Pokemon that you should never take um, like under prepare yeah. for because those yeah. two can really just fuck a team sideways um, yeah. if you don't prepare for it. Tapafine is the same way. I think it's going to be defensive and it goes for a car mine. You might be sitting really, really in a really, really bad position. Swellow is a really like undervalued pokemon in yes, my opinion it's really fast it can actually boom burst everything yeah um, and it gets scrappy but, um, as well so it, it yeah, is definitely so it's, a threat it's a very strong pokemon uh i do think you have a decent matchup as you said you do have a lot of mega gotcha responses yeah uh you do also have like the type of coco who has a pretty good matchup in my opinion uh yes. if you just create like the set that works the best with the Pokemon that you want to send to your team around. Yes. Uh, I also do think that the Mega Gallade has a fantastic matchup. Uh, right, because, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're going to get into that later, but yeah, Mega yeah, Gallade yeah. can outspeed pretty much everything except for the Swallow and yeah. some components of uh, of the weather, but um, yes. two of the weather, like one of the weather Pokemon being Mega Venusaur can't really break um, Mega Gallade that easily because Mega Gallade has such good natural special defense. So okay. it actually doesn't really KO it from a lot, uh, from a from a reasonable amount of health. Right, so right. let's go into the team that you created. Yes. For, uh, 
for the week. Notice the lack of a uh, Mega Gallade here. <laughs> yeah, you're going to see that. There's no Mega Gallade, but we'll get into that later when yeah. I show what uh, what my comments are on this belt. Okay. So you start off with a Don fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that assault vest Don fan. All right. Um, <laughs> You got the sand veil as well uh, to play some gimmicky things in the sand. Um, yeah. Kind of benefit from his sand. To yeah. Go, for, uh, go from there. Because um, I, the, the reason I did that was because I thought if if you allow me to, which I'm not sure you will, but if you allow me to have a salt vest on the fan, nothing really one shots me. So sturdy doesn't really benefit me, um, which is no, why I true. thought having sand veil was, was more beneficial in this matchup. Obviously, if we take the assault vest out, we might need sturdy for some things. <laughs> Um, yes, I do think um, I do think Sandville is a viable option here. I am okay. kind of missing Stealth Drops though, because if you look at his team, yeah, he doesn't really have the. He has a Tapafini. Tapafini is great removal, but Tapafini will be very pressured against your team, especially because you have a Tapacope, you have a Gengar, yeah, I have a Mega Gallade that actually does not. Uh, Tapafini doesn't really appreciate hits from Mega Gallade at all. Okay, you okay. do have a well, he checks Hydro, but you know, uh, you do have like these three really offensive Pokemon that Tapafini doesn't defog that easily on so keeping right. the rocks would be awesome for the Torkoal and for the scissor and especially for the swallow yes yeah okay so uh, we, we might want to throw some sort of style talking set on don fan but uh moving yeah. on we do have a scarf type of coco <laughs> yeah. that's interesting well okay i want it th so the the speed investments i've put at timid and 200 um outspeed stoutland under sand which i think is his fastest possible mon i think it does. It, it definitely is. Yeah, because it, it's jolly base... I think it's base 80 speed, so... Um, yeah. But obviously it gets doubled under sand, so that will still outspeed Stoutland. It will outspeed a Scarf. Um, scarf, Boom Burst, Halo, for example. Um, mm. I, that that was my thinking, but you, you might think that's unnecessary. Um, I do think it, it's, it's definitely like a cool bring. This is the fastest type of Coco I have ever seen. <laughs> I've used that Coco a lot. I used the Choice Scarf variant once, and that's because I wanted to have a lot of bulk, so I, and I didn't want to put any Eevees into speed, so I figured, well, might as well just run a Choice Scarf. Uh, but this type of Coco is <laughs> the fastest thing that I've ever seen in draft play. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got stuff a Hydreigon. Yeah. Yeah, the Hydreigon, um... It kind of it, it takes care of um, Guard Chump. Obviously, it outspeeds Guard Mega Guard Chump. Um, even at minus two from a Draco Meteor, I think it still has a chance to take out Scizor with Fire Blast. Um, yeah. Dark Force obviously just Super powerful awesome. stab. Focus Blast should take out a Tyranitar unless it's Assault Vest. So mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, that's true. It, it does it does a bit, but I don't know. The, this one was one of the ones I was I was. Uh, hesitant on. I can see, I can see Hydreigon in this matchup. Um, it does get like hard wall by Tapafini. Yeah. But we'll get into how we beat Tapafini later. Kevin Malotic, and um, you used to have max attack on this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't really agree with that. No, that's uh, obviously a mistake. This is supposed yeah. to be max defense. It is, yeah. Probably my favorite Pokemon in draft play. Uh, not really my favorite Pokemon. Probably my favorite water type in draft play. Yeah. Uh, Milotic is such a good Pokemon. Yeah. It is an awesome bulky, bulky water Pokemon. Yeah, because you can't toxic it, uh, because you do have the own play more, and it's so bulky from both sides, it will not die. Yeah. And I, I, I have proven that many times, and I do think the flame upset is really viable here, especially because you do kind of counter gotcha, not really sp counter, like hard counter, because it can still hit you very hard if, in case it goes for a sword sense, but it can still, it can still not break Milotic that easily and can just Ice Beam right back. Yeah. Uh, so I really like the Milotic set. And then we go into this set, which I found the most interesting set of the week. The 50% <laughs> berry with Power Punch. This one you really do have to explain. Well, uh, see, I wasn't sure about bringing Gallade, so I, I was kind of not sure about this spot, who else to put in. Uh, so I thought, well, Domantan hits Scizor pretty nicely, EQ hits Tyranitar pretty nicely, um, it also hits Heliolisk, but I mean, it probably gets out of sped anyway, but it, it hits Heliolisk with the EQ. Um, it, it just rock slide for Swellow, it just had things to hit stuff, it has coverage, I guess. Um, and then the power-up punch is just because I like 
power up punching on on people who switch to kind of get to plus one to then sweep. But um, and and the eye of Papa Berry is to to recover on the flare blitz so I can get a few more flare blitz off. But I realize that this this is the most adventurous set of, of the week. <laughs> uh, it, it's totally fine. You just have to realize that Sheer Force removes the power of punch boost. I did wonder, and that was I Do was going to ask that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. So power of punch <laughs> is not really that viable. I, I had a feeling. I was going to message you yeah, that so... before we recorded, and, and I forgot. So <laughs> I should have done. Yeah, but... Power Punch is um, kind of not viable no. in Domaniton just because of Sheer Force. If, if you don't want to run like Zen Mode uh, Domaniton, just just to be sure, because you know you re you get back that fifty percent uh, health, so you don't put yourself in the Zen Mode and you could just flab it something else. That's not really the point. Don't no, do that. But no. um, Power Punch is um, a waste. <laughs> kind of a man. I the, he he does have quite a few Pokemon that outspeeds you, which yeah. is a problem. Mainly being like Healer Lisk and Nian Shao. Yeah. Those two I really do see coming. Um I mean the thing well, is with Nian not... Shao is I, I I feel like he'll be afraid to click high jump kick because I do have that Gengar to switch in. Oh yeah, that's a good segue point. Into the Gengar. We have a Therium <laughs> Z set this week. Yeah. Yeah. Because it should one shot Garchomp, it should one shot Tyranitar unless it's assault vest. Um, and it should just do a chunk to quite a lot of other things if they decide to switch in. It'll take out Spiritomb. Because um, Spiritomb's a bit, a, just a bit annoying, really. Um, I don't know if he'll bring it, but I just find it a bit irritating. I guess Coco is my other answer to it. But yeah, I just thought having that Ferium Z, yeah. there's, there's potentially three Mons we can take out in one shot that are, are you know, Tyranitar and Mega Garchomp in particular are very good Pokemon on his team, so. Yeah. So Gengar is um, the thing is I I actually used this set in um, in a tournament. Uh, yeah. It was the what was the name? It was like a Pokecast official tournament with Halloween theme, and right, I used right. this exact exact set. Um, okay. Ferium Z Dazzle and Gleam, and I can tell you for a fact that that does not one shot a like semi bulky Tyranitar. Yes. Um, I used it in the finals, I did not pick up the KO, and it got up rocks on me, which sucked. But, right. um... I was gonna say, to be fair, I think I was calculating against offensive Tyranitar most of the time. Yeah, uh, uh, like max HP, I think it's a roll. Uh, it's not even a roll. Uh, I think with no HP, it's like a very big, a very huge roll in your favor. But as soon as you put a little bit of HP into that, it's not going to KO, unfortunately. Okay. Um, it's so... also kind of interesting to have Gengar versus a team with three Pursuit Trappers. This guy has three dark types. <laughs> all of the dark types gets pursued. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't. I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> uh, the thing is, if Will O Wisp is good because you won't die to the first pursuit, but it will do about forty percent. So if you switch on right. rocks and the pursuit trapper comes back in, you will die. Okay. You okay. cannot switch out. You will yeah. stay in. And so I. I, I like the idea by having Ferium Z because it takes out two of the Pursuit Trappers, but it does not take out the um, the Drapion. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of unfortunate. So I do think the Gengar is kind of it has a good matchup versus like one side of the bracket, but it does not have a good matchup versus the other side. And okay. he has used it, it kind of checks like Venusaur in a sense in Sun, but he has used Earthquake Venusaur all of the matches that I've watched it. Right. So um, so it will take out the Gengar either way. Right. Um, so, in general, I I do think you have a weakness to a few Pokemon. Okay. Um, Tapu Fini is the biggest one. Yeah. Tapu Fini can you don't really have that good of a switching into Tapu Fini. And the, the especially, sorry, go on. Um, especially since my logic is not a good Tapu Fini switching because Taunt and Nature's Madness will wear you down without yeah. you being able to recover. Yeah. Um, and, and the terrain as well bad. prevents me from getting my burn, yeah. right? So I, I need to make be careful of the terrains in this. Yeah, terrain can also prevent you from getting the toxic off on it. So you can't yeah. really, you cannot beat Tapafini with your one switch in, quote unquote, yeah. uh, which is Milotic, which is very bad. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to reconstruct the team a bit yep. so we were a little bit more Tapafini friendly. Oh, although, um, although, and also, um, can I just say well, that, that Don Fan gunk shot does quite a lot. <laughs> Not that Don, Don Fan is an answer to um, <laughs> to Fini. No, it's not. But... We're not using the <laughs> head smash Don Fan again for... <laughs> But Swallow, that's, that's not happening. <laughs> um, but uh, then also, um, 
I, I just wanted to tweak like a few moves. I, I, I liked some of the sets I, in general, but I wanted just to tweak a few moves. Like the high dragon, like the spread, I like the idea. But I actually wanted to switch out the um, the the focus blast for superpower. Uh, and even though you are minus attack, um, it still picks up a wanted KO on Tyrannosaur with no bulk. And this way you do not have to rely on 70% accurate moves. Um, I think you ha it is like a like an 85% chance of one it KOing a max HP Tyranitar with superpower. And that's be just because Hydreigon has natural high attack right, with the okay. expert belt boost. So having superpower instead of focus blast is really crucial. Yeah, that's also, really I wanted to have U-turn on the sets uh, for Hydreigon because Hydreigon just screams at the top of Fini to come in. Yep, yep, yep. And you cannot do anything to it. Yep. So might as well just predict the top of Fini, U-turn out and gain momentum into one of your, like, Top of Fini beaters would yeah. be probably Top of Coco. Yeah. Um, so the the new moves move set that I create. Oh well, the new move set I think is the best. It's Draco Meteor, Dark Bolt, Superpower, and U turn. Uh, you still do need Dark Bolts, and Scissor do, does not appreciate uh, switching in on Dark Bolts either way. Yeah. Draco Meteor, have to be careful if the Misty Terrain is up. If the Misty Terrain is up, you do actually have like a forty percent chance of one hit KO in the guard the guard shop. Right. Just because um, the the dragon type moves gets hot. Yeah, I didn't consider that. So that's that. very important. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, so next up, the the Milotic. Um, Milotic is very good, uh, very very good. Um, I just wanted to make a few. I just wanted to change a few things. Um, first of all, Milotic is now set up fodder for Reuniclus if he doesn't have dragon tail. Okay. Reun like a dual dual. Like dual setup reuniclus with carmine and acid armor is really threatening, okay. especially if high dragon is weakened or gone. Right. So having dragon tail on sets was really crucial in my opinion, and I actually substituted out the um, the ice beam for the dragon tail because okay. you can dragon tail out the guard jump either way. Um, yeah, yeah. And okay. then I thought about what if he what if he goes for a substitute? Well, then you're in a bad position. So I actually put a bit. Uh, of your defense into special attack, remove the speed because I do not think he has anything that really wants to speed creep my Lotic in this matchup. Okay. Except for maybe Scissor. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, scrap that. I'm putting some speed on my Lotic. Okay. Um, so I put, so we have like, we have 12 speed, and that's just because general speed creeping. That's usually what I do. Um, if, if you have no speed, the opponent can easily just try and speed creep you. Uh, but if you have just 12 speed investments, which will not change the damage calc too much. Uh, you can just outspeed the monsters trying to outspeed you with no investments. Uh, yeah. It's just like a like a really easy tip. Uh, if you add 92 in special attack, yeah, you are guaranteed to break a max HP guard jump substitute, which is very important in case he's sub sword stance guard jump, which can technically set up on, on my logic without ice beam. Okay. So being able to scold it is really good. You still have a button of defense in 156 with the bold nature and the flame or boost, so you will not die to any sort of hits. Yeah. Uh, you will just be a little bit, a little bit frailer, and uh, I think that changes like two percent in damage count. So instead of earthquake doing like 33, it now does 35 or something. So it's not a huge deal. Right. Right. Um, but that that's the Milotic set that I think um, will work. Okay. So now we have Milotic and Hydreigon. And now into the um, the 50% Dormanitan. Yeah. I like Dormanitan in general. I do think it's a good Pokemon, especially because this is one of the Pokemon that can weaken the Tapu Fini for you. Okay. Um, Tapu Fini can actually not really switch in on Dormanitan. He can switch in, but with Rocks up, and if you're adamant, you actually have a chance of 2 KOing the Tapu Fini, which oh, is wow. absolutely stupid. Yeah. That's just a max HP. Uh, type of Fini, but still, it is um, it is really, really powerful. This Pokemon yeah. is super good, yeah, uh, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, so, um, changed up the Dormanitan to a Scarf Dormanitan. Uh, I okay. usually do this with Dormanitan. I usually end up with a Scarf Dormanitan. Yeah. I, I think, like, oh, I want to bring, like, Sub and uh, yeah, yeah. Sub and uh, Valley Drum or something, yeah. something cool on Dormanitan, but I usually just end up with a Scarf Dormanitan because it's very reliable. Yeah. Um, and I changed up, I do have Earthquake and U-Turn. I changed up uh, the Power Punch for U-Turn, because yeah. U-Turning on 
stuff is just yeah, generally like that as good. Well. Yeah. Uh, and then I actually changed up Rock Slide to Return. Okay. Right. And uh, Return doesn't get uh, boosted by Sheer Force. No. But Return is 100% accurate. And um, if you want to hit something like a Swallow, or if you want to hit yeah. something like a Tapafini coming in, Return is just a all-around good option. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because you do I have the, uh, you do have the Earthquake for the uh, the things that want to switch in on Flabless, such so as Tyranitar and Torkoal, and what else I want to switch in on Earthquake? Mega Garchomp, for example. Uh, Flabless. Uh, you do have uh, Earthquake for the Mega Garchomp as well, but you can actually return most of the things that may want to switch in on flab lists, such as Mega Garchomp or Tapu Fini. Yeah. Return doesn't do a whole lot, but it does a good chunk. Yeah. Um, so I have a Adamant Nature instead of Jolly. Yeah. Um, and I have 120 in speed, because that allows you to outspeed Swallow with the Joy Scarf boost. Right, okay. And then the last 136 EVs in... Uh, just a lot of the leftover EVs, I actually put in special defense because um, gaining that special defense will be can be crucial by living like a um, like a sludge bomb from Venusaur in the sun. You can live a psychic from the Uriuniclus. Uh, you don't have to put that much a uh, like leftover EVs in HP because its HP is so naturally high, so you might as well invest in its defenses and buff of those. It right. will actually. Um, help out with the damage counts more. Okay. So um, that's the Dormanid Sen set that I thought of. And at this point, I felt like... Um, I think it was at this point when I felt like Gengar wasn't really the best option. I wanted yeah. to add Gallade instead. Okay. Uh, and I think that a, a bulk of Gallade could be really, really good if you look at the matchup. Right. Because bulk of Gallade can actually bulk up on a lot of his like weaker or like kind of offensive as well physical attackers such as the tyranitar if he's choice by any bulk up he only he only does 50 percent if you bulk up on the mian shao it can't touch you at all if you bulk up on the guard it does i think 42 percent with earthquake if you bulk up on the scissor it can't touch you if you bulk up on the drapion can't touch you if you bulk up on the Stoutland can't really do anything to you either. So having having the ability to bulk up versus like a Pokemon that can't break you, mainly a physical attacker, you will be able to get that attack boost and the defense boost, and then be able to drain punch and get your HP back. Yeah, I like that. I like setting um, up and, and drain punching. That's yeah, I, I setting up that. and drain punching is is so cool because um, you actually do beat a Garchomp one v one because you will be able to bulk up in the Garchomp space, take to Earthquake, and then your drain punch. I think the the thing with Drain Punch and uh, the Earthquake, Drain Punch recovery and Earthquake damage will take you down ten percent every time. But um, just have it; you will just chunk down the Garchomp so much, so yeah. it will not be able to beat you one v one. Yeah, unless he has rest. But you know, no Garchomp runs rest, especially yeah. in Misty Drain. That's not happening. Yeah, uh, I decided to run Poison Jab and Knockoff as my two coverage moves. This will leave you pretty weak against only one Pokemon in this team. These three coverage moves basically deal with this entire team, except for Venusaur. But yeah, wh why? I'm not really too scared of Venusaur. Okay. I was going to say, how come we don't have the uh, Zen head, but for Venusaur? Uh, I want to have the Poison Jab for the Tapu Fini, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And I think Knockoff is a better coverage because it deals with Reuniclus better. And Reuniclus can actually shut this set down. Right. Um... Venusaur can't really beat you. Well, it can beat you, but he has to sacrifice a Torkoal to get in Venusaur and the Sun, and then you can just switch out and bulk up on another Pokemon. But Reuniclus just instantly shuts you down. Okay, um, alright. Yeah, that makes sense. And at, so, uh, at plus one, does Knockoff kill Reuniclus? Or? Unless he has a Cobra Berry, it does. Okay, brilliant. But it can't kill you back. That's good. You can tear wave you, but not in message terrain. I mean... um, so for the EVs, I just put basically max speed because you need to outspeed the Heliolisk. Uh, so that is 248 speed EVs. Um, yeah. Yeah. With a jolly nature. And then I didn't really find any calcs where I felt like the defense was really needed because you do take one Specs Boom Burst from Swallow, you do take Moon Blast from the, uh, from the uh, Tapu Fini, uh, you do take like one Slush Bomb. So you don't really have to invest that much in special attack, uh, special defense this match, in my opinion. So I just put max attack and then um, 
eight in HP just for general bulk. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I can. So I'm assuming be... against Swallow, if I've bulked up on the switch in, Swallow comes in. Will a drain punch one shot it? Yes, drain punch one shot. One okay. shot it. Uh, yeah. Uh, but you do have to keep in mind that it couldn't be uh, that it can be physical with um, facade and uh, Braybird. I will but, actually take you out. Uh, but if I have a bulk but, up up before his, oh, no, I don't. Burn, I, I do think still you die to a Braybird. Yeah, even I was say have, guts boosted but Braybird. I'm, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, but you you will see if it is um, if yeah. it is guts by the just flame by, yeah. by the flame mode exactly, and you do have a Milotic to kind of deal with the flame mode set. Yeah. Um. So now we have uh, four Pokemon at this point. Yeah. And I actually wanted Stealth Ox because I do think Stealth Ox is very important. Just forcing his Pokemon to take rock damage might be really really crucial. Um. And. Um, I I just added Donphan because that is your only stuff. No, you have Gligar as well. Yeah, I have Gligar. Sure but um, I, I do think the Donphan set that I came up with will work this battle. Um, so I do have the Donphan and I switched out Gongshot, unfortunately. Yes, Rip Gongshot for <laughs> Stealth Rocks. And okay. um, I actually took your your idea with a 50% berry and added it to Donphan instead. Right. Um, because with the spread that Don that I gave Don Fan, you will be able to switch in on rocks, take one Specs Boom Burst, get yourself off to a range where you can take another Specs Boom Burst, and then set up your rocks or knock up or ice shard or whatever you want to guess as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, as long as he isn't modest. If he's timid, this will work out. If he's modest, well, then that's just unfortunate. <laughs> um, right. So um, I have max HP. Yeah. I have 112 defense. And I have 144 special defense with a careful nature. Okay, run me through that again. So like a max HP, like a mixed on defense. So if yeah, max HP, 112 in defense. Yeah. And then uh, the rest in special defense, 144. So no attack with a investment. careful nature. No attack investments. We don't need that. Donphan has natural high attack either way. Okay. Um. Knocking off is just good in general for knocking off the type of Fini when it comes in. Uh, and then if it doesn't have leftovers, it will just get chipped down pretty easily because it needs to switch in on the Hydreigon. It needs to switch in on the Dodmanitan. Probably will switch in on the Gallade as well. So just getting that shit shipped down will be very, very good. So I still think that we need some sort of switch in to, um, to special attacks. Perhaps if type of Fini is the dreaded Carmine set. We can have some sort of response to that. This is where I actually reconstructed your Tapakoko set into an Assault Fest set. <laughs> oh, um, okay. This uh, this is kind of a weird set, and you can yeah. say stop if you want to, but I, I I hope you pull this off in the way that I intended it to to, to work. I'm intrigued. Um, you, so, you've got me interested. Yes. Yes, uh, because he only has one ground type on his entire team, so yes. Thunderbolts and Volt switches are pretty free. Yeah. Um, so I wanted and to have his, a type of his Coco, one ground type. I also sorry, wanted it. it. It's worth mentioning his one ground type. Just for people watching, his one ground type is Mega Garchomp, which you don't really and want to bring is... in against a Coco because of that dazzling gleam. Um, yes, and the four times weakness to ice. So um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I don't think his one ground type is even really a valid switch in here. No, uh, but I wanted Co I, I wanted Coco like to be brought because electric stripes is pretty good yeah but i also wanted coco to take some special hits so that's why i decided on the assault face i had right. a leftover spit f set first but it didn't really plan out pan out the way i planned yeah so uh, i thought of an assault face set instead and the only thing i really changed from your set was i changed up dazzling gleam to nature's map okay and i'll get yep. into that in a bit but first i changed your evs just uh just a little bit just to be um yeah. Just to hit some specific benchmarks. And I started off by trying to make Tapu Koko survive a plus two metal coat boosted uh, bullet punch from a scissor. Right. Um, which I thought was pretty pretty important. You do have a Domanitan, you do have a Malotic, and you do have a Donphan. But these three can get weakened. And okay. what if Tapu Koko needs to take the hit? Well, then it should be able to. Yeah. And you need to be able to just Thunderbolt it back. That might be a scenario that happens. Right. And you can take that from full, which is okay. pretty good. And for that, you need 136 EVs in HP. Right. And you need 
68 uh, 60 EVs in defense. Yeah. All right. Uh, next thing I wanted is for you to not have not be not be forced to predict the guard from coming in. So I wanted the combination of nature's madness and HP ice be able to take guard out. Yeah. Because nature's madness is very spammable against his team because his vault doesn't have recovery outside of the reuniclus. Yeah. So just getting fifty percent on the top of well, top Phoenix not going to get switched in, but getting fifty percent off on something will be very crucial. Yeah, and the combination between nature's madness and HPIs is a guaranteed one hit KO on the Mega Guard jump if you only have 12, 12 special attack EVs. So okay. that's the only like special attack you need in the battle. Right. Everything else you can just thunderbolt and vote switch out. Yeah. Um, then I also buffed up your speed a little bit from 380 to 385. This is only because I want to outspeed the Swallow in max speed variant. Yeah. And I put the rest in special defense, which allows you to take... Uh, allows you to take, like, boom burst after you switch in on rocks three times, I think. Okay, right. And this still timid. I also wanted a... Yeah, still timid. Okay. Um, I also wanted Tapu Koko to be a switching into Heliolisk, so you do take two non-life orb hyper voices right which is pretty good so this is actually a very bulky type of coco type of coco is much more bulky than people give it credit for yeah and i do think you, sh you you can probably pull this set off because it is it's kind of like it's not easy to use but you know it is it's very like real what you need to do with it you need yeah. to switch in on certain po if you have to switch in on certain well, you can with this type of Coco because yeah. it is able to take the hits that it needs to. Yeah. No, I like it. Sort of like a safety check and a pivot. Yeah. So that should be everyone. Um, I think. I'm just looking through. Was there anything else I changed up with the team that you sent me? I don't think I did. Um, no. I try to think. Except it... for the for the nicknames, but uh, <laughs> I, you can change your own nicknames. That's fine. I'm I won't. Won't I'm, make you have my nicknames. I'm trying to think if there if there was a question I had about anything. Uh oh, the Don fan. Are we sticking with Sandvale or going Aya Papa? Oh, sorry, we're or going with sturdy. sturdy. Sorry, yeah, Stur sturdy, we're, not we're Sandvale. Sturdy, sturdy okay, this time. yeah, because we uh, put the Aya Papa. Right. Yeah, that's fine. I'm down yeah, with that. Yeah, because you want to take like a expect Sir from Heliolus and get a Brox or something. And and was it a if you if it gets. Was it a relaxed nature on Don Fan? Is that right? Relaxed. It was a careful. Careful. Okay. What? Um. Yeah, because yeah, we don't need special attack. True. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's the team then. Yeah. Um, wish you the best of luck. I think. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I. I think it looks stronger now. I feel more confident. Um. The. Oh, that was the other question I had. My only fear on his team, and you might say that I don't need to worry about it. Um. Is his spirit tomb now? What do I do against his spirit tomb? Okay. Um, well, spirit tomb is going to be very pressured, first of all, uh, because you know it needs to switch in. If it wants to be be efficient, it needs to switch in on the right Pokemon, and the only Pokemon that spirit tomb really switches into is Mega Galate. Yeah. Because Tapu Koko Volt switches on it. Hydreigon actually Hydreigon does so much with Dark Balls and Draco Meteor. It's not going to want to switch in on that. Okay. My Lotic actually beats it one v one as long as you have the Flame Orb up. Okay, because I know that because your natural special defense will allow you to take any sort of special hit from Spirit yeah. Tomb and any sort of physical attack on the Spirit Tomb. Okay, that's fine. Dormanitan, I think Dormanitan oh close to Spirit Tomb. <laughs> not sure about that, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. And then Donphan. Donphan is another Pokemon where Spirit Tomb can find some sort of room to maybe get up a Calm Mind or get up a Taunt or something. But Milotic will be a, be your best response to the Spirit Tomb. Uh, okay. I also want to quickly mention the way that I intended you. I intend you to play with a team. Uh, I w I want you to play super aggressively. Uh, this team is very offensive. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, very. it's meant to weaken the things that wants to stop Mega Gallade, and then for Gallade just to come in and click bulk okay. up once, and then drain punch all of its HP back. So the Mega Ven so the Venusaur in Sand or the Stoutland in in their own respect. Yeah. I think you might have dropped out a bit there. Are you still there? Hello? Hello? Yeah, my my internet crashed, and so now I'm on, on my phone instead. Okay, <laughs> all right. 
Um, I mean, so we, where did I where did I cut out? Uh, you cut out. You said um, about Mega Kalev, you had to drain punch on anything that that switched in, and you started talking about weather. So you started talking about Tyranitar and Stoutland. Okay, so uh, yeah, basically. Um, I, I don't know really what I said about Galate, but basically, team is centered around bulk up Galate to yeah. win. Uh, you bulk up once and you drain punch yourself out of range of the the weather sweepers to take you out. Okay. Uh, then you have the bulky Milotic to switch in on basically everything on the opposing side of the field. Yeah. And you have John Fenn and Tapakoko to switch on the few things that Milotic does not appreciate. Top of Fini as well. Yeah. Uh, and then you have the High Dragon and Dominitan to keep a momentum with U turn and to break the things that, uh, that wants to, to like wall out Galate, okay. mainly being the Top of Fini, or just putting it in range of, uh, of Galate's hit. Yeah. Uh, that's mainly the goal of the team. Yeah. Um, you're dropping a little bit, but um, that also perfect. Yeah, that's just perfect. Swedish, in Swedish internet in general. Yeah. It's, it's, um, <laughs> We, we, we're having it tough out here. Yeah, well, ours is a much better. It's negative to be five honest. degrees. Oh, really? Okay. Well, ours, right. uh, we're, we're about minus one, I think, today. I'm not sure. But uh, one thing that I just wanted to run past you, which I thought you'd appreciate, is the yeah. uh, the Mega Galade. I did calc it at plus one defense against an adamant, guts boosted Swellow. Um, and I believe it still survives, unless I miscalc. Ah, um, yes. Not 100% sure. That's so sure. good. Uh, so good. So, so there we go. That, that's a, a nice little plus for this team yeah anyway um thank you thank you so much for, for helping me with this and helping me to record this video hopefully everyone has found it you know insightful and interesting to see kind of how we build and and, and how that works yeah no problem it was uh it was a really nice time getting getting to join on the island yeah getting to hang out with us getting to hang out with the truant people um, yeah all we do is just loaf around all day it's, it's pretty nice <laughs> it's pretty easy it seems seems reasonable i i think i can uh I, I i can come come with some sort of some sort of habits to do that too yeah yeah and i know um i know hakeem wants to do some videos laddering at some point so maybe you can join us for some of those and you can come back and and, and actually battle with us next time now, as long as you don't bring head smash i'll be there <laughs> i can't promise anything <laughs> all right anyway guys um i hope you enjoyed this i hope you found it interesting thanks again to strumpful for joining us today um let me know down in the comment section if you found this interesting if you found it helpful what you guys kind of do if you have any differences or if you learn anything from it but we're gonna leave it here so thank you so much guys for loafing around with us and we'll catch you again next time <laughs>